they just started on me and I turned around at first kind of having come on in as a bit of a joke they didn't take it as a joke wow, wow. <laughs> I swear it's down like I think there's like 30 guys waiting for me outside to Welcome to the Manchester is Red podcast. My name is Stephen Railston and for today's episode, it's a very special episode because I'm joined by world number four and huge Manchester United fan, Nathan Aspinall. Nathan, a pleasure to have you here. First Thank of you. all, how are you? And did you watch Manchester United 4, Liverpool 3 on Sunday afternoon? So yeah, very well. Thank you very, uh, for asking. But yeah, what a game. Thursday. Um, Thursday, Sunday. Sunday. Yeah, I was in... Uh, the one, uh, I was in... Uh, Scotland doing exhibition, so made sure I got back in time and yeah, unbelievable performance. About time, isn't it? Let's be honest. It is, it is. It's not been a fantastic season, but they needed that, didn't they? You were just saying before we came on air, you don't really get a chance to watch as many games as maybe you did in the past now because you are just so busy. Yeah, um, before the darts took off, I was watching games, you know, home and away, midweek, weekend, went quite a lot, but because of the darts, it kind of takes over your life. So, yeah, unfortunately, I don't get to watch as much as I'd like, but there's a few big United fans at the darts, obviously Luke, Joe Cullen, Smithy. So when we're in the practice room, if it's like a, an afternoon game, we'll always have it on. Um, but unfortunately, I don't get to go that often anymore. You were just saying before, as we said, we came on air, you had a season ticket as well, didn't you? I think your manager yeah, had one as well. Yeah, so I had one years and years ago with my dad in the Stretford End, um, and we actually got rid of it the year that Fergie went. Probably the best decision I ever did. <laughs> <laughs> Deadly honest with you. Um, but yeah, then obviously Martin, my manager, he had one and we used to go a few times when we could, like I say, when we had time off. But, you know, he very quickly learned that he was wasting his money because he was never there. So, uh, yeah, we got rid of it. And uh, yeah, I've not been for what the hell, 18 months, two years now. I don't think I've been for, but um, hopefully I'll find a weekend uh, soon. You're going to be invited back after this podcast. We were just talking about Luke, so. Luke Little's yeah. appearance at Carol. Little's been there, so you get you in there. Yeah, yeah, it feels right. Um, to break the ice, then we'll we'll start off with some quick fire questions, if that's okay. I like to clip these up and put them on social okay. media, so no pressure. We'll start off by your favourite film of all time. My favourite film of all time, um, well, there's two really: Shawshank Redemption Good and The Lion King. Very controversial, but The Lion King. I love The Lion King. Uh, your favourite band or singer? Eminem. Good show as well. Um, your death row meal or your last meal on earth? It will be steak and chips with a Roquefort sauce. And how would you like the steak? Medium rare. Good shot as well. Um, if you hadn't been a sportsman, what would you have been? The only thing I was good at at school was maths. So um, before, obviously, I went darts, I was an accountant. So a boring answer, but I'll be an accountant. We'll get into that. Yeah. I didn't actually realise you were, you were formerly uh, an accountant. My producer told me that. Um, and lastly, your favourite type of cheese? Um, still then. good chat as yes, well very nice um, so we'll just start off uh, Nathan you're obviously from Stockport but yeah. you support United how did that happen because I imagine a lot of City fans or was, Glory, there, was, was there a lot of City <laughs> fans around there when you were yeah in there? there's more City fans in, in Stockport than United but obviously you inherit it don't you you know my dad was a United fan um, yeah and I always went, went to Old Trafford instead of Edgley Park I think as the times have moved on um, I've been doing a, a lot with, with Stockport and I've been to Stockport quite a few times. A lot of my mates growing up were massive, diehard county fans. So um, it's a bit more of a, a family effect, shall we say, uh, at Stockport. Um, but yeah, the two, I'm, I'm from Stockport. I love going watching county. I hope, want them to, to do as well as they can, but you know, primarily I am a red. And your earliest memories then, can you remember? People always ask, can you remember your first game? I can't personally remember mine. Do you remember your first game? Yeah, I hate uh, putting people on the spot with that one. No. Um, obviously, I remember the treble in 99. I was, I was, that's, that was my yeah, expression. Yeah, that was probably the, the first time, the, the oldest memory that I have. And obviously, um, the the Van der Sar save that time um, was class. But they're probably the two biggest, biggest well, oldest memories that I have of, of United. But presumably, you said you got rid of your season ticket in 2013. So you saw some fantastic games, some huge trophy wins. Yeah. Um, anything that stands out? I mean, some great players, Wayne Rooney, Ronaldo, yeah, watching them each week. Brilliant. Ronaldo was the one. I'm a massive Ronaldo fan. Um, even when he left, you know, obviously all the United fans were asking him for him to go. I didn't want him to go. <laughs> you know, I, I absolutely, he's my idol, Ronaldo, from the deadly honest with you. So when he came back, it worked fantastic because, like I say, Martin then got these season tickets and the first game he went was he scored the hat-trick against Newcastle, first game back. And, yeah, what an atmosphere. 
just the Viva Ronaldo going around the stadium was was unreal. And yeah, I think you get to you know go and see people like him, um, obviously like your Rooney's and stuff like that. Um, just amazing, amazing moments. Can't really remember the games if I'm going to be deadly honest with you because long time ago I've had a lot of sleep since then. But um, yeah, uh, amazing, amazing experiences at Old Trafford. Everything felt possible in that game. Ronaldo returned, it was a special atmosphere and he scored and people thought, you know, you're going to go and win the Premier League. Yeah, nah, nah, it had to happen though, didn't it? Obviously, the you know everything around Ronaldo, what he did before he left, and then when he came back, everyone knew that day something special was going to happen and you know, I think it was like 10 minutes in he scored, wasn't it, yeah. or something? Yeah. Um, it, it was inevitable he was going to get an act to it, but yeah, I remember that was a great day. In terms of this season then, I know you said you can't exactly watch every game, but what have you thought of it? It's not been pretty at times, has it? <laughs> No, that's why I don't watch it. <laughs> um, but now nah, it's, I don't know. They're so up and down, aren't they? Um, yeah, right. yeah, I don't really know what to say. It's just I been... mean, last season was fantastic, obviously. Top four, trophy, 10 arg, fantastic first year. And it just seems so inconsistent, don't they? Like you say, in and out. Some games, they can turn it on and the next week they'll lose. So for yeah, sure. I think <sighs> they've either been like getting a goal early and then sitting back and, you know, a bit like in England, isn't it really? You know what I mean? But... Uh, from what I've seen, it's just not. There's no um, will to win. Personally, if I'm deadly honest with you, people don't look like they care. If I'm deadly honest with you, that's that's what I see from it. You know, certainly like like Rashford. You know, he looked a bit different. I felt the weekend, but he just doesn't look like he's bothered. You know, there's so many players that just look like they're getting a salary, and that's it. Um, which isn't United. You know, you play you play for that shirt. It's a massive club, but. Yeah, times have changed, aren't they? I think fan opinion is definitely turning on Rashford, which is it's a shame to see because he's almost the poster boy of the club, born in Wivenshaw, came through the academy, obviously a fantastic player. But again, he's just so frustrating and inconsistent, isn't he? Could you see him maybe leaving the club in the summer or would you like him to stay and push on? I don't know. You, know, you look at the weekend, how many chances did he miss? I know. You know that, he should have scored the last kick of the game. Yeah, the last he, kick yes. of the game. Yeah. That probably confidence, maybe. Yeah, he probably knows that the fans have had enough of him at the moment. But it's up, for, up to him now to to prove that he you know deserves that shirt and deserves to beat United. And at the moment he doesn't. Um, but you know time will tell. Will he go? I don't think he will. Um, should he go? Probably. <laughs> but um, yeah, we'll see what happens. I just can't it. imagine him not wearing a Manchester United shirt. Just yeah, but he's only young though, isn't he? So yeah, these yeah. Um, you know maybe he might go out to Europe somewhere. PSG might be calling, I think. Yeah. Uh, and where do you stand on Eric Tenag then? Because as we've said, results haven't been great this season. I like him because I think he gets... He's not like a yes man. How we dealt with the Ronaldo situation and stuff like that. Um, I think he's a very strong character and I think that's what United need. I think everyone we've had since Fergie aren't that type of manager. I like him, but he, he still needs to do a lot more to to win a lot of the fans over in my opinion where does he stand then among the managers post Sir Alex Ferguson obviously Van Gaal David Moyes for example Jose Mourinho where would you rank him among yeah. those um, that's been a, a conversation this season after the results have kind of slipped and, and people have kind of suggested where should he be among those managers well you've got to look at the results you know last four eh, last four top four last year so surely that speaks volumes compared to the last 10-12 years Um. Yeah, but you'd probably have to put him in the top three, wouldn't you? Um, Would Mourinho be at the top? I don't know. <laughs> number, number, number two? I don't know. Um, I don't really know. Certainly Van Gaal's not there, is he? We'll give Mourinho a top. Yeah, we'll give, we'll give Mourinho a top, we'll top and we'll put Ten Hag second for now. But again, he's still got a lot a lot of work to do. Um, I know there's a lot of kids playing at the moment. How good was he, by the way? I'm mad. I'm, I'm mad. mad. Yeah, it was fantastic. Wow. Goal. Fantastic. Yeah, but even when he came on, I thought he was great, to yeah. be fair. So, um, obviously, he's got a, young, a lot of young lads now. So, I think give him time, give him another season or two and see what happens. And you were a footballer yourself. We were just talking about I was, yes. Give us a bit of context on that. No, yeah. I was a goalkeeper. Well, I was a centre mid at the start. Um, and then I kind of got pushed further and further back and ended up being a goalkeeper. So, um I love I love my football. I miss it so much because obviously I can't being a goalkeeper. I can't play. You know th these are my bread and butter. These are what make me make me money. So um, yeah, I played for uh, I had trials at Stockport County when I was very young, um, and then I got offered from being at Stockport. I got offered a contract at Rangers, um, but back then I think it was like ten, eleven. My family had to move to Scotland. Yeah, you never know. You know who knows. You know what could have happened, um, but. 
you know, I think at 10 and 11, it's, it was too much of a commitment for the family. So we, we turned it down and I ended up being at the, the United Goalkeeping Academy. So my coaches were uh, Ron Healy. I'm not sure if you've heard of Ron Healy. Ron Healy and his son, Scott Healy. They were my two main coaches. Uh, absolutely loved it. Never played for United, never got the chance to, you know, to train with the, the team or anything of that nature. But um, yeah, it was every, every Saturday, Sunday I used to train. I used to play like... Um, it was called uh, Inter County right, yeah. in Stockport. I'm not sure if you know that, but yeah, Inter County. Played for my, my local team, Hillgate Boys, and yeah, loved it. Um, but unfortunately, I got released when I was like 15 because I was too small. Uh, ironically, I got released, had a massive growth spurt, <laughs> but it was too late. The damage was done. And I played a bit for Cheadle Town before uh, I finally retired at 17. <laughs> but yeah, we uh, I played for Cheadle, which is like semi-pro level. Um, played a few games for the first and um, yeah the story is basically I played played in the I think it was like the final FA Cup qualifying round or something like that and it was free all last minute goalkeeper one on one came out gave a penner away didn't save the penner lads were best pleased with me <laughs> shall we say so they um, yeah smashed the changing room up what are you doing this that and the other and I was just like that's it yeah. threw my gloves in the bin never played since Goalkeeper gloves in the bin, you pick up the darts, you obviously went into accountancy as well. Yeah. Fantastic career to prepare you for darts, I suppose, because numbers. Yeah, that was the only thing I was good at at school. You know, I, I wouldn't say I was thick, but uh, I just didn't enjoy many subjects at school apart from maths and PE. Um, you know, I, I did my PE GCSE on the golf course. <laughs> you know what I mean? So um, all I did was play sport and, and, and do maths. So um, accountancy was the, the easy option really and um, yeah I loved it did AAT uh, had a fantastic job I've had a couple of fantastic companies that I worked for before obviously the darts um, and I was trying to mix the two and it was it was so hard it was like I'm I'm tipping up I'm on the pro tour working trying to beat your Van Gerwens your, your Peter Wrights your Gerwens prices when they've been practising all week and I've been working it, it, it's so hard and getting to that position to be able to do it full time is key so what was your lifestyle like back then were you working Carnage. 95 yeah coming home Carnage, just mate. playing darts yeah. or, it, it, no, I, I, right. I actually worked in a place called Mould as well North Wales so when I first started I used to have to get up at 7 leave my house at half 7 get to Mould start work at 9 finish work at 5 go and get like a burger or something stay in the office 6 till 9 doing night school uh, get home for quarter to 10 play a bit of darts and did that for 12 months were you busier then do you think than you are now do you no. have more free time no, I still listen. <laughs> nah, I mean, still busy, crazy schedule, it, it was but you know people, when people always ask you like, how much do you practice and stuff like that not that much anymore I did all the hard work back then to get where I'm at um, and then I left that job started having a, I worked for a company called Sambro in Berry. They, they made like Disney toys I worked for the accountancy firm there and they were fantastic with me as soon as I was getting better and better he always dropped there and they enabled me to go part-time, bit of a sponsor deal. And uh, yeah, they, they were fantastic supporting me in the early part of my career, but something I had to give because I was I was doing okay, but I wasn't just getting to that. You know, I might win one or two games on, on a pro tour, but then I'll get beat because I just didn't have that consistency because I was tired or I wasn't practicing or whatever. And, uh, you know, I'll blow smoke up his bum. My manager came and, you know, enabled me to quit my job. Uh, he got me the sponsorship that I needed for enabling me to go full time and as I say the rest is history we've had a fantastic what seven years together now you know we've won three TV tournaments two majors God knows how many pro tours and we're in the top four in the world so you know I think between me and Martin the relationship that we've had has been fantastic he's enabled me to quit the job I've come on board we've worked well together and now he's got a fantastic stable you know we signed an alright kid at the moment in Littler not bad, Who, is it? He? He's not bad, is yeah. it? He signed in last year and look what he's done. He's got Dolby, Andy Bolton. So, yeah, we've got a fantastic team behind us now. Could you tell us the story about you hitting your first nine dart? Because I've been informed. Have you seen this? Have you heard I, this story? I've been told. Yeah. You've been out with your missus. You come yeah. back a few beers and yeah. you hit a nine dart. Yeah, so we've been out and, uh, <laughs> yeah, as you do with your missus at three in the morning when you, <laughs> when you both had a drink. Let's have a game of darts, love. You know, and uh, that's what we did. We 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 had a board in the back room, just started playing darts. And this is honest to God, it's no word of a lie. I literally picked him up. I went one eighty, one eighty, one four one. 
No, like that, that's true. Not Sean Murphy. Uh, that was actually true. That happened. But uh, yeah, unbelievable. That was the first one ever done. I never forgot what it. What was your reaction then? Because surely you just think if that's that Surely just now we can go to bed. <laughs> oh yeah, oh, oh, more, more yeah. Jager bombs at that point probably. Yeah. 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 Uh, no, it was good. It was. Uh, I don't even know about, remember where we've been, but I just remember getting in. Let's have a game of darts, and it's a. My missus thinks she's really good when she wears the blue pajamas. Don't know why. <laughs> so she's like, yeah, well, put my pajamas on, and then we'll have a game. So he comes down in the blue pajamas. And uh, I pinged a nine against her, and uh, that was it. Good night. <laughs> did you train in the emigration in Stockport back then, or do you still go in now? And are you a celebrity now? In the, yeah. Did you call it the Emmy there before you were Yeah, the Emmy, the yeah. See, it's a sore subject, really, because they keep having me to go in and they just don't go in. Um, but you are busy, to be fair. Yeah, are. I am, but I moved out of Stockport as well now. That makes it tougher. Um, but yeah, fantastic times in the Emmy, you know, growing up. I used to have such a laugh in there, you know what I mean? And even when the the darts first started, the support they gave me. There's a load of pubs in Stockport, to be fair, the Emmy, Starving Garter, uh, the Finger Post, which is where we actually did start my darts, the Finger Post. It's now a food place, actually, I don't even play darts. But, um, yeah, fantastic memories of, of the of the boozers in Stockport and the support they show me now, you know, these big signs. Every time I'm playing in a big game, come and watch the Ask Bear live. And, yeah, the people send me videos all the time of all in my shirt watching it and... There's a few, there's a, the Gardner's Arms, they've got like a picture of me and Fo, uh, Phil Foden. Obviously, he's like a stop ball lad as well. Um, on the like the bar, massive picture. Most pubs in Stockport have got my head somewhere on there. So, yeah, it was great to get the support from obviously your local your local area. Can you go anywhere in Stockport without someone asking you? Not really. For a it's pretty out? bad. That's why I moved. I'm deadly honest with you. It was, it was getting to the point where. Again, darts has been getting bigger and bigger since I've started. Wow, you know, seven years ago, it wasn't. It was getting there, but nothing like it is now. And you know, over the last two or three years, I think once you get the Premier League, yeah, it's a whole new level. Um, if you're top twenty, top twenty five people who watch darts know who you are. If you're in the Premier League, people who like sport know who you are, and just anyone. So yeah, the popularity was going through the roof, and it's nice, but. When you go on Asda for a food shop, when you've got like half a day off and it's taking you four hours, <laughs> you know, you've got it, the missus, it, it, the kids. And yeah, yeah, and that was the other thing as well. People were stopping me when I was going out for food with my kids and my missus and that. And, you know, time, times like that, you're like, oh, just leave me alone. You I know guess it's the, the side of fame people don't really understand. And footballers obviously have it really, really heavily. Yeah. But it gets to that point in darts now where you guys are really high profile. Yeah, it's and cool. I think it's all about the protection now of the players. You know, <laughs> I think. Dart players are so much, so easily contactable compared to any other sportsman, and I think that's because of the way darts has always been. But now we're not just you know pub players who drink loads of beer and smoke and play darts. You know we're actually athletes now, and it, we have the, the things that we have to do to keep ourselves fresh. So like we now can go on there and perform at our best. It, it's it's tough. So yeah, I think um, it's getting to that. Obviously, it's nowhere near the football standard, but. You know, I even went to Jamaica last year. I thought, well, go, no one's going to know me in Jamaica. Gets off the plane. Oh, Nathan, we've got a picture. I'm like, buddy, on the beach in yeah. some block, asking for a selfie. Yeah, yeah, or yeah. Yeah. So, big, some big Jamaican guy. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was reading an interview before you came today, and you called yourself the Jack Rulish of darts. Could you give us that an insight into that? <laughs> Is that because you like <laughs> a drink <laughs> or you personally? Yeah. Of course, you're you allowed to say anything on this podcast. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah, I just love a drink. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, I'm a, I'm a party animal. Um, you know, it probably my, my manager's pet hate. He wants me to be more professional and stop going out drinking till the early hours, but just do it, I am. You know, I've got a fantastic circle of friends. Um, there's, there's me, me and Kirsty, and there's two other, well, three other couples that, you know, we are thick as thieves together. We always go out together. And the problem with me is, once I start, I can't stop. That's what I say about the Jack Grealish. You know, I'll go out and I'll be like six, seven o'clock in the morning by the time I get back and just have a, have a laugh and the pubs will show up. Everyone back to mine, come on, we'll uh, put the tunes on and love karaoke and that kind of thing. So, now nah, what I meant by that was I just love love the party scene and, you know, I'm only 32 hours. So, yeah, I work hard, but I also play hard. couple of questions then. What's your favourite drink? What would you sing on karaoke? And if you had to pick someone on a night out to come out, if you're from the circuit, from the dart circuit, would it be Chris Toby, presumably? Or no, something he, like that? he don't drink. He's a melt. <laughs> Honestly, he's he's a good lad, Chris. But yeah, he's uh, he doesn't really I like didn't drinking. Know that. I didn't no, know that, I don't. Yeah. He's, there's not many that don't on a night out, but he's one of them. But uh, favorite drink? It's got to be a baby Guinness, isn't it? Uh, as a shot, baby Guinness. We love a baby. Um, but we go to drink when I'm out. It's just Jack and Cola. Um, I know where I'm at to out with that. 
karaoke. God, where do we start? <laughs> hey, do you want me? Do you want me eighties or like maybe rap oh, one? Oh, but give nah. us your biggest hit, the one you can do best. Pfft, none. I'm, I'm, I think I'm really good, but I'm really not. Well, after seven drinks, everyone sounds yeah, alright. Um, that's the thing. I do mean lose yourself, Eminem. <laughs> but um, but now nah, the one I always tend to go to because I know it is, believe it or not, Yazoo. Only you. you know, do you not know familiar. Do you want to sing? No. Looking you, from oh, a window <laughs> above, he's like yes. story of love. That one. Yeah, lads, lads from the darts to go out with. Who's Got, the most fun? If you had to pick someone, that, <sighs> you were just lot. seeing you out in Newcastle, didn't you? Um, after the, yeah. the Premier League, who would you who would you go with? So Joe Cullen is probably the most fun, yeah. but I've got to stick with my boy because we, 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 we like Dick and Dom, me and Cheers, me and Cheers on a night out on the Jack Daniels. Stay away, <laughs> it gets messy. <laughs> yeah, excellent. Uh, we'll leave it there for part one and part two. We'll discuss more of Nathan's darts. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back to part two of the Manchester is Red podcast. Now, Nathan, a bit more darts chat. How are you finding the darts at the moment? Because an excellent 6-2 win over Rob Cross next to that. I was watching, very impressed. Yeah. Up and down, mate, this season. Um, you know, back end of last year after winning a match play, there's no words to describe it apart from rubbish, pants, terrible, dreadful. Um, but got put back in the Premier League this year. Obviously, won the match play. And I thought this year was going to be a you know, the year that I'm going to go and, I wouldn't say dominate the game, but certainly win title after title and it's not panned out like that. Um, it's been a struggle at the start of the year, but um, I think you've seen over recent weeks, it's getting there. Um, you know, I'm winning Premier League night. Uh, I've, got, I've had two finals and I'm probably playing my BC game. So you got to take positives from that. But yeah, I don't know. Mixed emotions, really. It's, I'm happy because I'm in the top four. Um, you know, I made the semis of the first TV tournament of the year, the Masters. Played well in, in the UK Open, but yeah, this summer not clicking at the moment and um, hopefully I'm going to find it soon. How do you put your finger on that then? How does it work? Is it a little bit more practice or is it just rhythm? Nah, or feel? well, ironically, I've stopped practising. So before the Worlds, I was practising like six hours a day with, with Smithy and I think it affected me too much. I think I was putting that much pressure on myself because I was putting that much work in that, um, yeah, I didn't play well. But now... I've gone back to how I used to be when I won the match play. If you don't practice, <laughs> I'll, you know. I'll, I'll, Gary Anderson does the same, doesn't he? he talks about he, that. Says he, does, he says he doesn't practice. <laughs> I reckon he's the biggest practice on the circuit, to be fair. But it just keep going, keep going, and uh, some will click. You know, I think I've struggled with my finishing this this season, and I've changed something up on that, and I feel confident now. I'm going for me on, on my double. So I think the combination of the confidence and starting it and my finishing, once them two click, then everyone knows how good I am, and I'll be very tough to beat. How was the disappointment at the Worlds then, obviously, yeah, around Christmas fun. time? Because you would have expected to, to go further than that. Yeah, going back to the practice, and I think I, I just burnt myself out. I think because I, I didn't play in the, the... The last tournament before the Worlds was my head, and I pulled... Well, I say I pulled out, I didn't qualify, <laughs> if I'm deadly honest with you. And I pulled out of that and uh, took my missus away, and I thought, right, I've got six weeks here now of, of hard, hard graft, and I worked so hard, the game is in such a good place, and to turn up and play like that was really disappointing, and... Uh, yeah, I wasn't I wasn't the uh, nicest guy to be around Christmas Eve, shall we say, but woke up Christmas Day morning, kids are there, they're buzzing that I'm not going back to London. So, you know, I'd, I've never been beat before before Christmas and it is really tough on your family. So when you do get beat, you kind of, you know, make the most of them opportunities and, yeah, we end up having a fantastic Christmas. So, you know, it was a... Swings around about... Swings season. around about, obviously gutted at the time, but, but when it gets to like the 28th of December and you're still playing with your kids with all the new toys and you're not in London playing darts... You can laugh. I laugh off it. So using that disappointment going forward, obviously I presume it makes you hungry, especially yeah. with the Premier League coming around. And yeah. do you kind of funnel that into your energy when you approach the Premier League? Yeah, I think it's not resting on your levels kind of thing. So I've, I've done it in the past where, like when I won the UK Open, like you think, oh my God, wow. And then you kind of step off and then very quickly you can fall down. And right, as easy as it is to get to the top, it's even easier to fall. And I think that's kind of what I learned from last year. It's like, right, I had an amazing 12 months, so, you know, two finals, major finals, won the match play. You've got to push on now because there's money to be, to, uh, to be defending. And if you could kind of sit back and just let things deal with itself, I'm going to end up being outside the top 16 if I'm not careful. So you've got to work out, you've got to keep that focus there. And, you know, I think for me, it's not the practice, it's the head. If my head's in a good place, then I'm very tough to beat. And, you know, like like I touched on before, I've got a fantastic team around me. 
you know, my sports psychologist, my management, my family. So, uh, yeah, I feel like very, very soon my best is going to come. Can you put in the words what it feels like then to be up on that stage? I mean, obviously, you just won that night at Exeter recently. Surely the adrenaline, you're on such a high. And is it hard to kind of come down from that when you get back to your hotel room or... Well it, is, <laughs> well, it is when you got mine the, the day after in the UK Open. So, um, yeah, it, I, I again, I have so much adrenaline pumping through my body when I'm playing the walk-on, you know, at the start. Oh, my God. You know what I mean? If anyone's been, been to watch it live, they'll understand what I'm talking about. It is electric. You know, Joe Cullen's got a good walk-on song, but nothing compared to the, the bright side. Why did you choose Mr. Brightside then? Because I've, I've also read that is, you fucking hate it was a direct quote. Do you hate your own song? Or obviously it gets oh, everyone going, it, it stirs up the crowd. It's one of the best walk-on songs, yeah. I'd say. Um, no, I hate it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I used to. But it, it does get everyone yeah, going. I think it's fantastic. I was in, a, I was in a, um, New Year's Eve, I was in a club called, I don't even know what's there anymore, Bradby Hall in Stockport. And um, like I got beat in the semis of the world, came back, went out for New Year's Eve and um, I was just in there thinking this is an opportunity because my walk on song wasn't working I think what, what it, was it at the just time? can't get enough I think it was Depeche Mode and it just wasn't working it wasn't getting the, the crowd going and Mr Brightside came on and the place erupted oh, that's the one um, so I went for that and you know it's grown and grown and grown and I still don't know the words I stand on the front doing all this I still don't know the words but um, yeah it, they love it you know what I mean it's now part of part of darts you know Mr Brightside is, is darts now um, so when I was going about like I don't like it it's, I hear it every day in my life you know Premier League nights I hear it three or four times a night and then got my earphones in and it'll come on my Spotify I'm like change it's gone that but uh, yeah the crowd love it and I love doing it you know when you imagine what, what feeling 15,000 people all singing your song back to you can't explain that feeling so uh, the buzz that I have from that Obviously, then when you're winning, the adrenaline at the end of the night is is obscene. It really is, and it's so hard to come down from it. Um, you'd think I'd have learned yet yeah, over five years, but nah, I'm still like count, <laughs> counting the cracks in the ceiling when I get back to my hotel room. My brother loves that song. There's been a few times we've watched that. He gives us a text. Oh, do you see the ass whipping up the crowd there? Because it really does get the crowd going. Um, what's the usual week then for, for Nathan Aspinall? How do you prepare? Because you're saying you're not practicing as much, but walk us through your regime, your, your general week. No, so no, normally, well, generally speaking, Monday, um, well, at this year, Monday, Tuesday, Pro Tours, so Sunday night I'd be travelling to a Leicester or a Wigan or a Milton Keynes or whatever, play Monday, Tuesday, Pro Tours, um, Wednesday, travel to a Premier League venue, wherever that may be, normally media commitments to do, uh, Thursday night you play your Premier League, and then it's either... Uh, like Friday, Saturday off, or you might have a Euro tour. So like last week we was in Brighton, I played Thursday night and had a flight at six o'clock Friday morning to Belgium and then had to play Friday night. So it is full on. Like, How do you have time to do anything? You that don't really. Yeah. That's it. And this is why it's about managing your calendar. Like the footballers, for example, Yes, they train, but they train like what eleven till half one, and then they got the afternoon off. Um, a lot of free time. Yeah, they have a lot of free time, and even when they're playing away, they might have one night in a hotel. I literally spend five days a week in a hotel, in probably four different ones. <laughs> you know what I mean? So there is so much travelling, and people don't understand how much there is to do in in the darts. But it's about managing your calendar. It's taking time off, and I'm probably the world's worst at that because I take so much time or maybe too much uh, because I get burnt out. You know what I mean? I've got two kids at home, I've got a missus. you got to see them at some point. You know, there's more to life than just playing darts and earning money. You've got to you know, spend time with your family. So I do take a, a bit of time off, plus we're playing now as we speak. There's a tournament in Germany, but I decided to pull out and come and see you lot instead of dinner. Good choice, I yeah, think. Good I choice. thought so. Um, I imagine it's mentally tough, that, because nights in hotel rooms if you're away from the family. And how do you spend those hours in a, in a hotel room? Do you I've watch just, a TV series yeah or? I've just thank god that Netflix exists what are you watching at the moment uh, I've actually got nothing to watch at the moment uh, I've just finished that uh, is it Griselda my mate was just watching that he says yeah. quite good yeah very good um, so in fact tell you what I started watching last night uh, I know it's been out for a couple of years Squid Game have you seen that I've not I'm yet to I'm watch it I've not seen it I've yet to watch really it very good things yeah it was very good, good so but now I love all like my Breaking Bad Prison Break um, Stranger Things is my favourite um, so I, I just kind of watch them get back to my room, put them on and just literally just chill.
April 4th, a few weeks' time, obviously yeah. night 10 of the Premier League, your homecoming, Nathan, formerly the MEN Arena, I'll sneak that in. Um, how excited are you for that? It's going to be okay. a fantastic yeah, episode. It's, it's the one that I look forward to all year. Last year was my debut playing at Manchester and the PDC kind of did me and Mike over. They put us against each other because I think they wanted someone to get through to the semi-final. But now we... I didn't want to play Mike, he, he, you know, he, he's not a man, he's, he's a bit scouse in it really, but um, weird, he, li- that, he likes it? to think he's a man. Yeah. But um, yeah, we, me and him played each other, he's a United fan, so I thought the the support would have been split. They were on my side, if I'm deadly honest with you, but uh, it, I never really get that nervous when I play. I was nervous that night. Uh, Is that just because it means more? Yeah, you're... I think there's so many friends, family... Everyone there is from, I wouldn't say they're all there just for me, but they want me to win so much compared to everyone else. And you can feel it, you know, you can, you can feel them on, the, on your back. Same at Blackpool, you know, they want you to win. And, you know, when people like Gezi gets booed and stuff like that, sometimes it's actually easier when you're getting booed because you're like, well, they don't give, they want me to lose. So if I win, you know, it's kind of two fingers up at you when you've got 12,000 people all want, willing you to win. Every time you miss a double, you go, oh, and then you're thinking, oh no, <laughs> you know what I mean? Please go in. Um, but I think I learned from last year and I'm playing Rob Cross this year. So I'm not playing another, you know, lad from this area. So I think the support is going to be amazing. And yeah, I can't wait and hopefully get my first win at, at Manchester. Have there been many examples of the crowd being on your back? I can't think you, you see, you be a generally quite Yeah, no, the, it's been a few times. Nothing major, you know, a lot of it are getting Holland um, or Australia. Aussies they hated like me in Australia. Yeah, I don't get you know. They uh, there wasn't yeah, they didn't like me in Australia to be fair. And then I think what you gotta do is like Gezi's done it so many times, you kind of react, then it's worse. You know I was gonna I mean? ask you about you try that. and take ten thousand guys on, you ain't winning, are you? You know what I mean? So uh, I did it in Australia and um I was playing Whitlock to be fair, and uh, they just started on me and I turned around at first kind of having come on then as a bit of a joke. They didn't take it as a joke. Wow. <laughs> I swear it's down like, I think there's like 30 guys waiting for me outside, to be honest with you, because I was giving them that much grief back, but uh, part and parcel of the sport, you know what I mean? Nine, nine times out of 10, I'll get I'll get the support wherever I go. So, you know, if I get booed now and then, like I did at Cardiff against Gez, you know, I'm a big I'm a big enough man to deal with that. What did you guys think then at the Worlds when Gezi came out? Yeah, I thought he'd mega. I actually seen him two days before. <laughs> uh, could he, I'm sure he put a post on with these ear, ear muff things. And I seen him, and I was like, oh, seen your post, mate. Brilliant. He went, I'm not joking. So I, I'm laughing. He went, yeah, uh, Nath, I'm telling you now, if they start on my back, I'm wearing them. Yeah, okay, guess yes, whatever. You know, he, <laughs> he, he did. He walked out on him. And I'm like, I'm sat at home going, what is he doing? <laughs> you know what I mean? But nah, it's, um, I don't understand why he didn't bring Gezi headphones out. He would have made a fortune, wouldn't he? That was a miss brand deal, wasn't it? I think uh, an oversight from his manager. Yeah, but no, nah, he, he did it. And, uh, Obviously, that backfired as well, didn't it? Everyone likes to talk about darts nicknames, and I know yours is just the asp. Rubbish, you know? Well, did you just think, ah, do you know what? Simple nickname, take that. Or well, you stuff for inspiration. So, my nickname was Aspie growing up as a yeah. kid. Um, and dart shirts, well, well, when I first started, it's about having like a big picture on the back and a nickname. Um, so I was kind of thinking what I can use, but to tie in with Aspie. And someone could say, well, why don't you? Have the, the asp, it's a snake, kill Cleopatra. Did you know that? I didn't know that. So you didn't? You go, no, I didn't. Yeah, know that. I'm nodding along, but I didn't uh, know that. So the asp is obviously, it's a snake, kill Cleopatra. Why don't you have a snake on your back? The asp. Yeah, go on in. Why not? That's not a bad idea. But if I could go back and change it, a lot of people, because of the way that I am when I'm playing, they all call me like waspy, like when I've got the bit between my teeth. So maybe it could have been called the wasp, maybe. Mm-hmm. With a yellow shirt. I could come on to buzzing or something. <laughs> Too late for a prime change. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah. um, on the subject of nicknames, the nook we were just talking about them as well before we came on there. Obviously, the same stable, same management, yeah. isn't it? Um, when was the first time you realised you had a, a bit of talent? Because it was kind of word on the scene, wasn't it, this lad was, was coming from? Yeah, he, yeah was, he was... I played him, I think it was Chester, in a Riley's tournament, and I beat him 4-3, and I think he was about 4 no, he was about, he's about 11, 12. And, um, did he have a beard then as well? Yeah, he did actually. <laughs> <laughs> wow, he like, who's this kid? Like, And then I remember seeing his dad was with him and his dad was dead critical of him because he'd lost. And I'm like, mate, he's 12. Like, I'm one, well, I was like top 16, I think, in the world at the time. I'm like, give him a break. No, no, he needs, he needs to learn, he needs to learn. And, you know, obviously that, 
that probably that hard talk over the years has probably produced one of the best art players he's ever going to be in, in our sport. So he's amazing. You know what I mean? What else can you say? You know, us players are, are sick of seeing his head on our social media because he's just making stories every week and you know, that's credit to him. You know what I mean? It's it's not just the media that are obsessed with him. He's he's the one that's bringing him to him, if that makes sense. You know, the amazing work, run at the Worlds. Then he hits a nine dart against me in Bahrain. Then he wins the tournament. Then he wins the first pro tour. Then he wins the first Euro tour. So every week he's making stories. So that's full credit to him. But yeah, he's still not won a Premier League night yet. I've got one over him at the moment, haven't I? <laughs> you, you beat him recently <laughs> as well, didn't you? Yeah. Isn't oh, that was sweet. Yeah. yeah. It's the first time I beat him, you know, since being a pro. And obviously we, we we practice with each other in, in the past and you know generally speaking I got the better of him but I think since the Worlds he's a completely different animal and yeah I've, I don't think we've any of us have played well against each other in the first two times we played certainly Brighton was was dreadful by both both of us but I think it was nice to actually play a decent game of darts with him um, and yeah I played fantastic but I, I needed that for me on for me own sake because I couldn't lose three on the three out of three against him. Would you compare it to your kind of rise at the Worlds in 2019? Because no, you, completely you, different. No, yeah. I mean, but you were you were huge then as well I yourself. Was you, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> 16. You, you knocked out Gezi as well to go and Price, didn't you? And was yeah. it Michael Smith in the semi-finals? That was a big story it, it, at the time. Yeah, no. To be fair, I, I kind of get where you're coming from. It, I did come from nowhere. Uh, it was my debut as well, like Luke. So um, yeah, you obviously went one step further than me. But um, yeah, it, you know, yeah, probably does have a bit of similarity. The only thing is, is I won a major after that, and he didn't. <laughs> You've <laughs> no, got no, that yeah, well. I've got that But now, um, yeah, I can kind of get why you, why you say it. But like I say, he, he's only he was sixteen at the Worlds, sixteen years old, making a world final, and not just scraping it. The way he played the game against Rob Cross was was obscene. So uh, now, full credit to him. You know, he's, he's gonna make us a lot work harder. That's for sure. Because in the day, like I said, I've you know before, and you know we've worked hard, so hard to get to where we're at, and he just tips up and starts beating us all so yeah we're going to want to put him back in his place definitely and what's your relationship with him man because you're no, the, the same management so I guess yeah, yeah, yeah. you're friends with Dolby and, and Lit Lab but you are competing as well I guess yeah it's of course interesting I think dynamic. that's the difference between darts and a lot of other sports is we are all so close and I think you see in a moment a lot of pundits are getting a bit annoyed with the fact that we're hugging after games and stuff like that but you know look at the, look at the Premier League you know I'm, I'm with the mate guys Wednesday, Thursday, Friday for four months Right, so half of the, half of the, my week I'm with these three, these eight lads. So of course we're close. You know what I mean? And uh, when you're on there, you want to beat each other. Of course, you want to smash ten lumps of, out of each other. But after the game, it's all respect. Uh, I don't think you you'll ever see one game in the Premier League where it's a bit, you know, we call it a wet fish. You know what I mean? Everyone always gives each other res respect. But now I've got you know get on with him. Um, like I say, get on with Dolby, get on with everyone. Really, there's not many people that I don't get on with. Difference with Lucas, he don't really talk because he's he's obsessed with Xbox and playing stuff and, on his yeah. phone. <laughs> um, going back to that 2019 Worlds, then uh, Nathan, I mean, obviously a fantastic run. How did you spend the money? Did you buy anything silly, or uh, can you remember? Did anything stand out in your mind at that time? Because you were very you were very young. This is the Worlds, you mean? Yeah, yeah, in 2019. yeah, I had a lot of debt, so I paid some of my debt off. Uh, very sensible, which is something I'd never thought I'd be able to do. Um, it was life changing that though wasn't it yeah of course it was yeah because I was skin you know what I mean I had nothing and then all of a sudden you know I think within three months I won I won the UK Open which was 100 grand and the semis was 100 grand so I won 200 grand in three months but a month before I, won, I got to the Worlds I had like five grand in my bank if that you know what I mean so I've got all this money now I'm thinking what the hell do we do is that, has that been difficult kind of getting that so quickly I know you've worked so hard for it across the years and eventually it kind it, of comes yeah out. definitely and I remember speaking years ago to Rob Cross he obviously won a hell of a lot more than what I won but he won the Worlds and he was saying that he just didn't know what to do he was dead depressed and I felt a bit like that because all you've ever wanted to do as a kid is you know if you can be successful playing a sport that you love travel in the world give your family everything they want that's what you want in it, in outer life. And then when it all comes to you, you're like, oh my God, like, what, it's overwhelming. And I did, you know, I was a bit down back when I started doing all that, winning all that money and, um, you know, obviously going back to it, you know, don't want to keep blowing smoke up his ass, but, you know, management was there to, to help me get through them times, you know what I mean? Um, you know, how to not necessarily invest it, but, you know, buy yourself a house, 
get yourself this, do this with it, do that with it, make sure you get your tax money. How important so, to have that team around you? You've mentioned a psychologist as well. How often yeah. do you speak? Cause you in elite sport, it's so important, isn't it? Yeah, I think especially where the game's going now, you need, you just need the right people. It's not just a guy saying, like, do that, do that, do that. You need to also have a, a bond and a relationship with him. And we've been through dark times together, certainly me and my management uh, have, but we've also had some amazing experiences. So, um, you know, and it's the same across the board, you know, not just me, but your Dolby's, your Luke's, you know, it's all about helping each other out. And we have got, honestly, we've got a mega team. ZXF is a mega team. All the lads are fantastic. And, you know, but darts is getting to that next level now. So you need more than just management. You need, like say, the sports psychologist. And I've been pushing so hard to try and get some of the other lads talking to him because, you know, everyone else does it. Every other sport, footballers do it, boxers do it, golfers do it. You know, darts is probably the most brutal sport there is out there. You're on that stage on your own. If it's going wrong, it's only you that can sort it out. So you need to be very strong in the head. And, you know, the guy that I'm speaking to is working wonders on me. Um, and yeah, it's, just, it's great to have these people around you. If you look at your career then, what would you say is the highest point? And then you've talked about some of the lows. What's been the most disappointing low? Yeah, highest got to be the match play, yeah. without a doubt. You know, coming back from my injury, um, what, 12 months prior, never thinking I was ever going to really reach the heights again to then winning the second biggest tournament. And it's, to be fair, obviously everyone wants to win world, be world champion. But for me, with where the tournament is being in Blackpool and the support I get, that's the one I want to win so much. Um, legendary Phil Taylor trophy, you know, the best to ever pick, our da pick a dart up was amazing. So without doubt, I, no question that's a match play lowest point pfft, there's been a few <laughs> there's been a few um, that's I, the nature of the sport yeah though, isn't it? That's the nature of the sport. I, I'd probably have to say as a whole like, getting the injury that time um, I thought that was it I thought it was back at uh, the accountancy yeah. firm it, it, it was really bad and again luckily you know talking about having the right people around you you know I had the right people doing the treatment the right specialist I got the best doctor that I could possibly get. Were you um, told that you might not be able to return to Dart right and say no? It wasn't was it, it wasn't to that extent. You know, obviously these stories are escalated, yeah. don't they? You know, you know what I mean? Like the football story, some papers are putting like that. Like, I was nearly like in the England team. You know what I mean? That, that's how much stories get escalated. But no, nah, it, it was bad. There's no doubt in that. It was bad. But they wanted to give me an operation or an operation was on, on the cards, but I don't know how I'd recover from that, so I didn't want to do it. And it was just about letting it heal basically but it was four months and in our sport if you don't play for four months your ranking is going down and it's so hard to get back up so it's not like football where you guaranteed your wage I wasn't making any money either for them four months um, but yeah it was tough it was tough to deal with and then trying to come back I developed in darts it's called a snatch so because I, I was in pain I was doing that all the time getting beat all the time and it, it was really, really tough. How frustrating is that? Because you obviously you're in such a good position. You it get was. An injury, you come back. And I was playing so well. I probably played yeah. the best darts of my life as well. I'd just come off um, Van Gogh and beat me in the semis at Europeans, wasn't it? European finals. And I tipped up to a pro tour two days after that and I just felt it go. I was in such a good place mentally, darts-wise, and that happened. And, you know, these, these things happen. You know, ironically, since since that's happened, I've come back and I've, I've had two major finals and a win. So... Um, yeah, things happen for a reason in life, don't they? But yeah, it was pretty, pretty bad time. I'm not gonna lie. In a few months' time, obviously the world match play in yes, July again. Um, how quick how, is that going? I know it does wow. fly. Around. How excited to get back there! Yeah. And who do you think your biggest threats are this summer? Um, yeah, can't wait. Like I say, I love. I love it's just the best. It's just the best. Any dart player asks, the atmosphere is mega. You know what I mean? It's diehard fans as well. So people know me by like a weekly ticket. Um, ah, oh, it, it's just unreal. If you've never been, mate, you need to get there. He's class. But um, yeah, I love it. Can't wait. And uh, hopefully when we you know, defend the title. But biggest threats, you know, be be wrong of me not to put Luke in that mix, wanna. Uh, but for me, you know, the the, the favourite. You are the champion though, that's the thing. You're going yeah, yeah, that. of course. And obviously the support I'll get it will be amazing. But I think Darts has gone through the roof again. Another the standard wise, I mean. The last 12 months, though, Gary Anderson is 52. He's probably playing the best darts he's ever played in his life. You know what I mean? Banging 110 averages in like, do you know what I mean? Like the 60 averages, it, 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 it's obscene. So every game's going to be tough. But for me, I think the guy to watch is uh, Luke Humphries. I think he's absolutely fantastic. I think you look at him in the Premier League this year, he, he, he bangs averages in that look like he's playing at an 80 average. When you're doing that, 
you're good. You know what I mean? Like Phil used to do it all the time. He, you'd watch him and he'd go, he's not playing well there. He comes up 107. Do you know what I mean? Like when I bang 107 average and I make you know I've had 107 average. Do you know what I mean? I'm jumping around like an idiot. It's just natural for, for, for Luke and he, he's full of confidence and yeah, I think he's the one to watch. But he is a Leeds fan. But he is a Leeds fan. That is his problem. <laughs> hey, I'm not lying though. I've never known. It, I, I don't, he's going to have to rethink it because everywhere he's been, he's been booed. I've not seen him be cheered. He's getting once. that way, isn't it? Yeah. yeah why, and, why do you think that is? He's a Leeds fan. Oh, is that, <laughs> that's just, no just other reason, reason, isn't it? <laughs> but anywhere we've gone, even um, where we were last week, well, Nottingham, Nottingham. Oh my God! And I played. I did I play him last week? I did, didn't I? Yeah, in the final. Yeah, he, Leeds scum. We all and it and it just non-stop. Um, but you but, know what's going to happen when you go to the arena a few weeks down the Manchester arena yeah luckily he's not playing one of us because it would have been bad um, but yeah he'll get Jaden and Leeds won't he, anyway of his well, good luck for the rest of the season Nathan Cheers, mate, I'm sure you will need it thanks for attending yes. really appreciate it no and thanks to listeners for listening I uh, hope you enjoyed the episode take care